So 2022, you could say, has been the year of the Air Max 1. And in today's review, we have a very exciting early look at the soon-to-be-releasing Nike Air Max 1 in the Iron Stone colorway. I can't tell you guys how gassed I am to be able to say that we've got these in hand early. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into the video. So before we get into the good stuff, just like we always do, before we take a look at the shoes, let's just get the packaging out of the way. Now for this one, we just get that ordinary bog standard red Nike sportswear box. You've seen one, you've seen them all, you've seen this one. So if we take a quick look at the label, which reads, we have the Nike Air Max 1 in the sale Ironstone White Rattan colorway. And this is a personal pair, I'm very glad to say, as it is a UK size 9. Absolutely gassed to have these. If we then just open up the box itself, on the inside, we just again see that pretty boring tissue paper. Well, not so boring, just underneath we have the kicks. So let's go ahead and get straight into the shoes. So without any further ado, the moment we've all been waiting for, in hand we have the Nike Air Max 1 in the Ironstone colorway. Now, I do believe that this shoe is scheduled to be releasing at some point in November. That's what the rumours are saying, but the rumours keep changing, the release date keeps changing. And unfortunately, that's as much as I can really advise at this stage. Now, I was actually quite fortunate because these shoes did actually raffle on HIP. Now, HIP is like a retailer based in Manchester, I believe. Now, when the raffle was posted, of course, I entered it, but I took an L, as is pretty expected for me. And I just kept checking back because I had a sense for some reason that these were going to be available at some point. Now, they did actually restock about a week or so ago. They had my size on their size 9, crossed out. I was like, damn, I've missed the restock. The chance is gone. Why? But funnily enough, on Wednesday, I'm sat in the office and I had a quick nosy and there it was. The only size left available was a size 9 and there was only one size or one pair left. Of course, I snapped these up. Shut up and take my money. But even after I actually got the order confirmation, in the back of my mind, there was something telling me that this shoe wasn't going to show up. It was going to get the order cancelled. But funnily enough, a couple of days later, these things arrived. And I was absolutely gassed by it, to be completely honest, because this is definitely a shoe that's been on the radar for such a long time, and I'm absolutely gassed to have these. So if you've stumbled across my video and you want that look at these shoes to decide if this is one for your collection, in this review, I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know, from materials through to sizing. So by the end of the video, you can decide for yourself whether this is something you're going to pick up for your collection as well. So just diving straight into this one, starting out with the upper to begin with. And for this one, we do have a very nice autumnal vibe. Now, for this one, we do see hues of off-white, beige, as well as brown. And all in all, for the time of year, this is absolutely perfect. Now, we do also see a very nice mixture of materials from mesh to suede. And all in all, the quality of the materials is actually very nice as well. So if we kick this one off from the front of the shoe and then gradually work our way back. At the base of the shoe, we do have this very nice crisp white mesh material, which definitely adds a really nice pop to the shoe itself because it's then nicely accented with this off-white short herd suede around the toe box on the mudguard. Now, the quality of suede is actually very, very surprising. It has a really soft texture to it. There are some parts which do feel a little bit rough, but overall, a very, very nice quality. And then also featured on the lateral side of the mudguard, we do have a brown mini swoosh. I love a mini swoosh, and especially in that brown color, it just looks absolutely incredible. On the youth throw, as well as in the quarter midfoot panel, again, we do see more of the off-white colored suede, which again, does have a very nice, softer to touch texture. And then in the middle of the midfoot, on both the lateral and medial sides, we do have a nicely accented brown Nike swoosh. Now again, the quality of suede, it isn't the most premium thing in the world, but again, it's getting the job done. And especially in this really nice brown colorway, it looks absolutely incredible. And then as we do work our way onto the ankle collar, starting with the top eye stays to begin with, around the eye stays, we do see more of the off-white colored suede. Again, like we've seen throughout the vast majority of the shoe. And then when it comes to the eye stays, they have been constructed from a TPU material. Onto the ankle collar, we then see more of that very nice crisp white mesh material like what we saw with the toe box. And as we reach the heel, like we've seen throughout the vast majority of the shoe on the overlays, we do see more of that very nice off-white coloured suede. In the middle of the heel, we then have the Nike Air Max branding done in brown. Unfortunately, the Nike Air Max is back, just like what we saw with the Matter Roots, just like what we saw with the tree lines. But honestly, it's, it's not taking anything away from me. If you're a purist and an OG, I completely understand why you won't like it. Even me, I prefer the Nike Air always, but again, because it's done in brown, I can live with it. I think it looks absolutely fine. 
Now, when it does come to the lacing options for this one, you do actually get a couple of different options. Now, the lace that you get in the shoe are personally my preference, and I do think they do look the best, as they're done in that very nice off-white colour. But if you did want to add something a little bit different to make this shoe stand out, you do also get a neon set of laces as well. <laughs> Personally, I think it's a little bit too much for me. It's a little bit of overkill. If I was going to do a lace swap, I probably would try and find the laces to match the same color as the swoosh to kind of add that like autumnal look to it. Again, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but you know, we're in the midst of autumn at the minute. So those brown hues are always going to work really well. I'm a little bit too lazy to even look out for those. So if you guys know anywhere I can get some laces to match it up, do leave that in the comment section down below. But just in terms of how it looks straight out of the box, I think these off-white laces are doing the job so it works just fine for me. But as we do work our way up to the top of the tongue, this could actually be the most divisive thing about the shoe. Some people are going to love it and I know some people already hate it. But for me, I'm a little bit indifferent. So on the tongue itself, we do have some text which reads, Nike Air consists of a special gas pressurized inside a durable, flexible, urethane skin. After each step or jump, Nike Air cushioning springs back to its original shape. Personally, I actually think that, that adds a little bit of character to this shoe because, you know, it's all well and good having Nike Air or Nike and swooshes and all those other kind of things. But having something like this on a shoe just adds to the overall vibe of the shoe, in my opinion. So whether you hate it or love it, let me know in the comment section down below. But for me, I definitely thought it was a pretty nice touch. And then again, we do have some vault accents underneath, which I do believe is just your Nike Air Max branding. So if you did want to match up to the laces, could be a nice look overall. And as you do work our way onto the inside of the shoe, we have a very soft cotton sock liner. Unfortunately, it's done in that white colour. I hate white sock liners because of how muggy they look. But for this one, it definitely gets a pass because the colourway, you know, it couldn't go with anything else. So the white sock liner is going to be the nicest look. And then as we do work our way even further inside the shoe, we just have your pretty basic insole, which has been done in that off-white or even cream colour. And we then have more neon accents with the Nike Air branding. And then just to close that in terms of the details, when it comes to the midsole, we do have a polyurethane midsole with the visible air unit towards the heel. And I'm definitely feeling the overall color choice just in terms of how it looks from the midsole to the upper. Blends together really well. It's not quite off-white or sail. It's like almost like a beige color, but overall definitely liking the look of it. And as we then work our way onto the outsole, again, we do see more of those beige hues on the outsole. And the outsole is just your pretty classic Air Max 1 design. Always looks absolutely incredible. Now, when it does come to the sizing for these, whenever it comes to the Air Max 1, I'm always going to recommend that you just go with your natural true to size fit. I went true to size with the UK size 9. They fit me exactly the same as any of the other ones I've bought this year, and I've bought a lot this year. So when it does come to sizing, just go with your natural true to size fit, and I do think that'll be the best bet for you. But if there is a chance for you to try before you buy, then for obvious reasons, that'll be your best bet. And then outside of that, we've covered everything that you need to know from materials through to sizing. So if we now just go ahead and just wrap up this video. So just to wrap up this video so you guys can get out of here, in terms of my overall opinion on the shoe itself, to give these a rating, I'm going strong and saying that these are a solid 9.5 out of 10. Could even be a 10 on a different day. This colorway is definitely up there for me as one of the best releases of the year in terms of GRs. I know a lot of people are saying that it's better than the white patterns. I'm not going to say that. I like both of the colorways, but I feel like just in terms of having a shoe like this in the collection, I'm gassed. I think the colorway, the color blocking is incredible. The materials, the design, the details, everything about this shoe is exceptional. And I just feel like the execution was very, very good as well. Like there's no QC errors or like glue stains or any of the typical things that we would normally associate with Nike. This shoe is absolutely perfect. It couldn't have been better and I'm absolutely gassed to have these in the collection. Not quite sure what number of Air Max 1s this is in the collection. I know a lot of you guys are saying that you do want to see like a full Air Max 1 video. Maybe I'll do that at the end of the year because there's still a lot more pairs to come out that I do want to add to the collection. And I'm also reaching back and potentially picking up some older releases as well. So definitely keep an eye out for that on the channel if you do like the Air Max 1. I'm obsessed right now, so do expect plenty more Air Max 1 content on the channel very soon. But with all that said, I'd love to get your guys' opinion on this one. So do let me know what you think of my rating. Let me know what yours is. And let me know if you are looking to pick these up when they do release in November, if it is going to be November. And if you have stuck around to this point in the video, as always, I just want to say a massive thank you. If you haven't already, please feel free to smash that subscribe button. Also, do make sure the bell notification is switched on so you never miss a video. And I hope to see you all again in the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.